Hey, alright, so uh, it's been a while since I recorded one of these videos and I figured that I would do something probably a little bit more relevant. Uh, a common thing that a lot of people need to use nowadays is the identity framework, and the identity framework is something that allows people to typically uh, go ahead and create things default by default with the uh, user and the roles and user manager and things like that. Um, because a lot of times people just want to quickly do that. So in this case, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, let's right click on our project, hit Manage NuGet Packages. If you haven't already, let's install the Identity Framework. Uh, mine's going to take a little bit to load up here. Second time, it should uh, cache faster. We're going to search for <coughs> sorry, <coughs> whew, Identity Framework. Uh, you can see this first package here, Microsoft ASP.NET. Uh, let's go ahead and install that one. It's going to install any dependencies that are required, like uh, Identity Core, and um, <clears throat> once this is installed, that will install like the User Manager and the Application DB Context stuff uh, for us. So I'm also going to install the Entity Framework because I don't have that included in my project. It's likely that you probably already do. Uh, I should note that I've never done with this with anything less than MVC5, so... Um, uh, this wants me to restart my Visual Studio, so yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Uh, really quick, I just wanted to note that essentially, yeah, so what was I saying? Whew, man, it is, uh, it's early in the morning, so that's the only reason. So anyways, yeah, I've never done any this with anything less than the MVC5 framework, so. All right, cool. So that's installed. So now let's go to our models, and uh, I like to keep things pretty organized. So I'm going to create a user folder for a user namespace, and uh, I'm going to create a roles folder for a role namespace. And I'm going to go ahead and hit add class, and uh, we're going to hit add class, and we're going to create a user class, because that's what we want. And uh, let's inherit from the identity user. And I hit control period for that to come up, or if that doesn't come up, uh, you can just click on this little guy here and hit using the new framework. And now we want to cast this key as an integer, but to do so, we also need to do a couple other things. I'm going to move this down here so that the IntelliSense will pop up and be on screen for you guys. Uh, you're going to see here that it has the login. We're going to need a user login of type identity user login. We're going to need a role. Um, so. We need a claim, so let's start with the login. I'm going to add a class called uh, user login. And let's go ahead and inherit that from identity user login, control period, and cast that as an int. And that's all we need to do for that class. Pretty sweet. All right, so let's uh, put our user login there. What else do we need? We need a role class which is of type identity user role. Okay, so let's go to our roles folder and hit add and hit add class. Let's say role. And let's go ahead. I'm going to say identity user role control period enter and I'm going to cast it as type int. So now that it has a primary key of integer. And let's close that out as well. I have a, uh, whoop, see I made a mistake here. This should be named user role. And this will come up, I'm gonna hit yes. It's gonna rename our class for us. I'm gonna close that out. User role, not the identity user role, our custom user role. And let's see, I hit comma, and now I want a claim where the base class is identity user claim or inherited from, so. Let's go ahead and go to our users folder. I'm going to right click, hit add, class. I'm going to say user claim. And if you didn't guess it already, yes, we're going to inherit from the identity user claim. We're going to cast it as type int for the uh, primary key, for generic key. I'm going to close that out. I'm going to say user claim. And sweet, now we got our user object, uh, which our database will use, and it's inheriting from the identity user, so it knows to use that. Uh, it's going to use the user login, role, and claim. So, all right, so I'm going to minimize that stuff now. And now let's, uh, we need to make our context for our, for our application uh, so that our 
application knows uh, how to load the database. So I'm going to create a new folder and I'm just going to call it database. And now I'm going to right click my folder here, hit add class, and I'm going to call it application context. Uh, some people like to call it application DB context uh, because you're inheriting from a DB context, but application context is descriptive enough for me. So, And we're going to inherit from the identity DB context. And I'm going to hit control period again, hit enter. And now just normally this would use the this would look through your classes here and find the user or, or the identity or just would use the generic identity user model, but we want it to use what we have. So let's cast our user object. Now you could go ahead and just do this. And that would be fine, but the issue with that is you're gonna get an error. Uh, telling you that you have to cast the rest of these because you have different types of uh, it's going to expect that you have an uh, you have a GUID for the identity column here not an integer so we need to do the rest so let's go ahead and do that so I'm going to do role or I'm going to do a user role here because that's the base class that it wants uh, it needs a key which is the integer it wants a user login type. Well, it's telling us the identity user login, so we have one of those. It wants a user role of type user role, and it wants a user claim. And I just realized that I made a mistake here. This part here actually wants a type of identity role, and uh, if you remember, we didn't necessarily make one. So let's go do that. And let's go to our user folder and add class. Let's say role. And we're going to inherit from the identity role. Control period. Hit enter. We need to give it a type key, which we want an integer to be a key. And we need on a user role. So we already have one of those. So that's pretty slick. And you need to make sure that these are being casted as the same types. Um, it will throw an error, uh, I believe an invalid operation error, if you uh, if you don't. So now we can just pass our custom role, and that's it. And <coughs> more importantly, if you're going to inherit from the identity DB context, um, I always like to <coughs> do the inherited base class. And you can either just leave it default, um, which is fine. You don't need to necessarily do anything. And you don't necessarily need to do this either. Um, but I typically do just because uh, it allows for a little bit more customability and a little more reability and understandability. understandability whew, speaking of, uh, further down the line. And I usually just give it a uh, connection string to use. A default connection string to use. That way that... Um, doesn't have to be specified later on or anything like that so and it doesn't have to go through your web config looking forever so and that's all there is to it that's how um this is going to work in this tutorial and that's all you have to do so uh, you can either finish watching now or uh, i'm going to do the migrations to kind of show you how this builds out um my package manager console here so let's go ahead and enable migrations for this project and like I said this is just an extra step to kind of show you guys what's happening in the background with the uh, application context um, you don't necessarily need to see this but it kind of will help you understand a little bit what's happening uh, and then let's go ahead and add a migration to this project and I'm going to call it initial and what that's going to do is it's going to build a dynamic class for us. It's going to add it to our migrations folder. Um, it's going to give it a unique timestamp and then the un underscore and the name that we gave it. And uh, usually this is descriptive, uh, like dropped column, blah, 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 on some table or something like that, or changed primary key or removed table. Um, this is called initial because, well, this is our first initial migration. So, And yeah, let's go ahead and take a look really quick. Um, what it did here. So it created our ASP.NET user roles, it created our ASP.NET user roles uh, table with, uh, let's see, we have an identity integer, we have a primary key, primary key with the user ID, we have a users column, 
or a user stable, sorry, uh, with ID of uh, integer now instead of a GUID. Um, we have the user's claims login. These tables uh, you don't have to pay so much attention to. Uh, this is kind of handles the way that the user's logged in and keeps track of all their um, credential information um, in the background. So, um, But anyways, so yeah, so let's go ahead and do our web config here. And... Um, I think I already added connection string at the beginning of this. Yeah, I did. Uh, connection strings... Well, it looks like it's not complete. Or maybe it is. Yep, it looks like uh, there's just some stuff way off on the side here. So I made a connection string called primary connection. Why? Because I told it to use the connection string primary connection. Uh, we're going to use the data source as local DB version 11. Um, I have local db db installed on my machine. I'm telling it to use the identity db file name, and actually it should be data directory identity framework dot mdf. That could have caused an error. And integrated security just to tell it to use the credentials and role app uh, role authentication that I have, and uh, use the SQL client provider to connect to this database. So. Now uh, I can go ahead and update my database, and it should create that database and everything for us, and we can actually even look at the schema more specifically. And so specify the verbose flag, so we could actually see the SQL statements that it'd be uh, running. It's running the seed method. Um, we won't worry about that. That's for a later date. And yeah, let's go ahead. I'm gonna lo I'm gonna show our hidden files. It created our database, so that's pretty sweet. Uh, it's going to open the file. Let's take a look at our tables. And load this over. You can see it did make migrations history. I made our roles uh, with our ID and name. With an ID, user ID. So yeah, so it already generated all that for us. So, And that's all we're going to do for this tutorial. So hopefully this was uh, pretty beneficial to you. And uh, we'll see you next time.